Hello everybody, AJ Rizek here and today I got a quick little tutorial for you. This is especially for all of you Zubuntu fans out there. We are going to install XFCE version 4.12 into Zubuntu. Now this will also work for uh, you know essentially any XFCE uh, distribution that is using Ubuntu as its base. So, uh, you know, I think Linux Lite uses XFCE and uh, uh, what's that? I think Voyager, I think it's called. Anyway, there's there's a lot of XFCE uh, uh, versions, I guess you could say, uh, or distributions that use Ubuntu as its base. So for any of those, the same method is going to work for you. And basically, we're just going to install BPAs, do a little updating, and boom, we're ready to go. So, um, let's go and open up our terminal. This is a fresh installation of uh, Zubuntu 14.04. And let me go and pull this down from my notes here. Now, one of the issues that has come up with uh, uh, 4.12 is that uh, Qt applications aren't using the GTK, GTK styling uh, after upgrading. Um, so, we're going to want to have a fix for that. So, the first thing we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to add this Qt4 configuration menu and so we'll go and we'll add that and don't worry I'll put all of these terminal commands down in the video description down below so this will be easy for you to follow alright alright so we got that installed let's go and pull up the QT settings menu and so under the first tab right here where it says appearance and select GUI style we want to go to GTK plus save it and then we can exit this and that's you know basically all that we'll need to do so that uh, uh, the QT apps know, you know what GUI style to use so now that we've got that set up we can go and add the PPA for uh, XFCE 412 so we're going to add the development PPA All right, and then we'll do so app get update okay and then we will do sudo get distribution grade all right just gonna click yes and you can see all the packages that get upgraded I mean there's you know ton of them there uh, there we go 48 upgrade six newly installed so do we want to install this yes and it's just a matter of kicking back and waiting for this to do its thing after all this is installed you're going to need to log out of your system then log back in so what I will do is I will pause the video while all that's going on and then we'll come back and take a look at what we've got here alright we are back after our install and our reboot and uh, it doesn't look a whole lot different here but um, you know as I go through things you'll see that most of the changes are kinda under the hood uh, one thing that you will notice right away, the default theming is a little bit different. It looks like a, I don't know, I guess you could think of it as a as a, a more streamlined, tweaked version of the Ottawa theme that uh, the GNOME desktop uses. And in some ways I kind of like this better in that it's much more, uh, it's thinner, it's more streamlined those window borders on uh, on the GNOME desktop while they are neat looking they do take up a lot of space so I, I kinda like that narrower you know the narrower border but 
you know, at the same time, the same style. Okay, so anyway, some of the stuff that we've got that is changed. Let's start with under appearance. We've now got previews, not only for our styles, uh, also for our icon styles. So it's nice having the, you know, those previews. Um, and while we're talking about the windows, let me pull open the window manager. Uh, as I said before, you know, this default theme, and they're just calling it default, is, you know, similar to uh, the Attawa theme. Um, so that's a little bit different there. Um, but let me find it here. Here we go, the display. They finally made this uh, a whole lot easier for those of us that are using multiple monitors. Um, you can go and shift around the positioning of, of your monitors on this on this graphical display, uh, and then as well as you know set your resolution and all that kind of stuff. And which you were able to change this before, but the way this is set up now it, it it's just so much better and again this if you're just using a single monitor probably wasn't a big deal before uh, but it was a bit of a pain for those of us that were using multiple monitors something I missed on the I believe it's in window manager tweaks yeah that's where it is uh, for those of you that use the, uh, the alt tab function to cycle through your open windows there's now basically two different options you can have one is the traditional I don't know if you want to call it traditional or not but we've seen on a lot of distributions where you have this kind of icon based cycling uh, you can also now enable this cycle through a list so click alt and tab and you've got a list which you can now you know scroll up and down via uh, your up and down buttons and the the tab button still works so uh, you know once again one of the things not a big deal but uh, you know it's nice having the options to to pick and choose what uh, what you like and what works for you um, kind of cycling through my notes over here on uh, on uh, the changes um, Oh, and, and of course, this is one of those things that you really can't see, um, but they now include support for client-side uh, decorations and corner tiling. So let's take a look at some of the uh, some of the applications that have received updates in 4.12. First, we're going to look at the terminal, and you can now use the uh, the terminal as a drop-down. Now, I've added a launcher up here on the the top bar if you just click on that you see I now get this drop down terminal um, and, and of course you can go and key that uh, to a uh, to, to your keyboard so maybe you set it for F12 or whatever and it'll drop down just like Quake or Yak Quake one of those uh, so very nice on that one and, and actually I'll be doing a follow-up video uh, probably a couple of follow-up videos on some of the different tweaks and 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 whatnot that you can do to XFCE to prove the functionality. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do with XFCC, XFCE. Yeah, I can't talk today. Wow. XFCE, uh, very versatile. Um, so I'd like to go and, you know, just show some of the different things that you can do with that. Anyway, so there's the terminal. Thunar, our file manager, has been updated. And if we go here to our file manager, open it up. And uh, we can now go and open uh, our folders and whatnot in multiple tabs. Now, personally, I would rather see a dual monitor, triple mo triple pane monitor, you know, that sort of thing. But uh, tabs is, uh, you know, I'll, uh, it's an improvement. Uh, <laughs> so here, if you right-clicking to open a new tab, and boom, there you go right there. You can do multiple tabs. So very nice update on that okay so what else has been updated well um, mouse pad oh, that's the mouse and touch that's not what I wanted mouse pad which is the text editor it has been updated as well although you know from here it doesn't look a whole lot different 
uh, but now supports DTK3. And, and actually, that's sort of something that is uh, that is happening all over in uh, XFCE is the gradual transition to uh, to uh, uh, GTK3 compatibility. Um, Mousepad is now compatible with it. Um, the uh, the panel can now accept GTK3 uh, based icons, and uh, more and more of the apps are. GTK, GTK3 base. So my guess is that by the time we're at, uh, we'll say, uh, 414, we might be totally ported over to GTK3, which is a good thing, because um, there's lots and lots of themes and whatnot that uh, that are in GTK3 that you know we can't use them right now because it's not compatible. And really, there's no reason to still be using GTK2. Um, GTK3 has been out for a long time now. Um, no reason not to update. Anyway, uh, okay, so Mousepad's been updated. Uh, if you use the Parole Media Player, which is the default media player, it has been updated as well. Um, better compatibility with different media codexes and uh, uh, more user friendly now. Personally, I always use VLC. Um, so that's kind of a you know eh, who cares thing for me but I know that there's a lot of people that use the parole media player so you know lots of updates there as well uh, let me take a look over at my notes see what I'm missing here we already talked about the terminal oh the um, there's the task manager Task Manager has been rewritten, a uh, little uh, more user-friendly interface. So if you want to keep track of CPU uses, uh, memory use, all that kind of stuff, uh, very nice tool. And I think that about covers, um, oh, here we go, let me last a few things on my notes here. Um, Squeeze, which is the archive manager, was has been rewritten as well. XF Burner can now has Blu-ray support. Um, let's see, uh, Weather plugin has a new user interface. Clipboard manager plugin uh, will display a QR code, and CPU frequency plugin uh, now supports the Intel P state. Well, that just about finishes things up here. I uh, just kind of wanted to give you an overview of, uh, you know, the various the various updates and changes to uh, to uh, XFCE as well as how to update your system to uh, to four point twelve. Uh, and as I said, there will be some follow up videos how to do various things. Uh, like for one, I'll show you how to set up the terminal as a drop down. Um, some different things you can do with Thunar so they can add a little functionality, um, things like that. Um, because XFCE is a real nice lightweight distribution, or I wouldn't say distribution, but uh, uh, desktop uh, environment. Um, I, you know, I'm a big time GNOME fan uh, of the GNOME 3, but, you know, if I want to go with something lightweight, this is a top choice for me. Um, to me, the uh, LXDE, you know, that's too light. Um, the XFCE, I think that strikes a, a real nice balance between lightweight and functionality. Uh, and at the same time, it, it's very... Um, very versatile you know if you want to go and set it up so that um, say kwin the uh, the um, kde window manager is your window manager no problem you can do that want to use compass no problem you can do that um, so you know very versatile so uh you know, like I said, that's kind of the, the reasoning for, for some of these videos that I'm going to do. Just show you a little bit of the, the uh, versatility that uh, and, and extra functionality that you can add. Well, uh, as always, give us a big old thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. 
and uh, please subscribe if you are not a subscriber. As always, questions, comments, all that kind of stuff, add that down below. And, uh, oh, while I am on the subject, um, something kind of kicking around with some of the other Linux YouTubers out there is having uh, like a maybe a, a, a live question and answer session or just a you know let's talk Linux uh, 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 chat session probably doing it on uh, on uh, Google Plus uh, you know let me know what you think about that if you'd be interested in whatnot and uh, you know if we can get and pull enough people together to do it and uh, uh, maybe we'll set it up soon if so I will you know give everyone plenty of notice when we're going to do it, all that kind of stuff. Once again, thanks a lot, and I will see you on the next video.